Um, hey guys, um, welcome to this new tutorial of Grasshopper. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, lists and some operations that we can do with them. Um, because basically almost everything in Grasshopper uh, gets represented as a list, right? So let's go ahead and just, let's say, do some line like that, right? And let's add a few points around. So I'm going to do one point, press copy and then basically go crazy and just add lots of points around. Again, maybe this tutorial or some of this content you have seen it online, uh, I'll just add some of my own view on it. Um, so let's bring some of these things into uh, into Grasshopper, right? So what I'm going to do here is just call curve first and I'm going to link this to one curve by pressing set one curve, so that's fine. And then I'm gonna double click and put point. And you see that I can put point, but in this case I just want to click set multiple points. So I'm just gonna be able to select all of them, right? So it will tell me which one is the first and what is the order of the points, and that's fine. I will right click and say that's fine. So I have several points and a curve, right? So let's go ahead and bring a panel here to start looking at what it's inside these points, right? So if we connect this, we'll see that we have a list of points. In this case, it's a list of lots of points, 50 points, 51 points, really. So let's talk a little bit about what, what kind of information. This is kind of a list, right? So what kind of information do we get when we create a list? Um, so I'm going to just open another panel to put a little co few comments here, right? So the first thing that we need to understand is what is the index, right? So the index is this number here, right? So the index would allow us to just operate in like the order of things, right? Like what is the first, the second, you know, and that's what it's inside. Um, the second one is the item, right? So this is really the content of the list. In this case it says reference points, that means that there's a reference to some, uh, that's something that represents a point, right? So not a big deal, it could be numbers, it could be anything, but the item of a list is this kind of, whatever it's kind of displaying in this area. And then we have something else. Uh, we have, I'm just copying this, uh, we have the path. And the path, uh, it's a very interesting concept, perhaps the most interesting bits of grasshopper starts happening when you start playing with the paths, right? When it become less parametric in terms of parameters, but more um, if you can talk about the parametrics of dealing with the, the how the data navigates um, the network. But a path is basically the idea that the data has an address, right? Whenever you kind of create more data, the data, let's say, creates a branch out of whatever the parent was, whatever you created that data from, right? So right now we are just, we have a direct relation to the first series of points, but if from these points we create some other data, they will have a second path. And this is uh, described as something called the data tree, and we will get into that later. So we're not just talking about the list and what are the ingredients that the list is telling us, um, but this somehow is already kind of pointing out to some of the um, content and some of the material that uh, Grasshopper uses to just organize, organize data. So what can we do? Let's say, so I'm going to just put the point here first and the curve here second. So the first thing I want to do is just evaluate this curve and find a point in the curve, right? So let's try to do that. Uh, I can go into curve and find analysis, evaluate curve, right? Uh, or just type evaluate and you'll get this. And the evaluation of a curve allows us to kind of get one point in the curve, right? It requires a curve and also a parameter to evaluate. So you, we need to give it a value and a number, right? So I'm going to go into the slider. I'm going to bring a slider here and just connect it, right? So you'll see that we should be able to have one point somewhere, like there, right? And we, if we move this, you'll see that we can just navigate the curve. So it's a point on a curve. That's what this evaluation command is doing. But we cannot really reach the end of the curve, so I'm just going to edit this slider to be something like 10. 
and we could see how how far this parameter goes if we would check the domain of the curve in this case it's just something around 5 so you could edit that again but for now that's not important we're not talking about the domains of the curve or anything like that we just want to be able to talk about um, how data it's organized in a list right so let's go into the panel um, so out of this output we have a point right and we have this other point let's try to connect the points with a line so I'm going to use line and I could connect this point with this point and you see that wherever I kind of I move this point here I'm basically connecting everything here right so that it's pretty straightforward every point connected to one point you can see that there's a stream of a list here and this is a stream of a, only one point so that works um, if you want to just be able to remove this connection you can just press control and disconnect right so um, let's try to do something slightly more interesting right let's kind of evaluate first the distance between the points right right so I, I can calculate each one of the distances right and I'm gonna copy this panel just to see what are we getting here so we're getting a list of distances right each one of them depending on how far they are from this kind of evaluation point right and I want to be able to say well let's connect only to the closest one right the one that it's the closest so for that it's some it's, it's somewhere where you, you start basically dealing with lists let's go here into sets and you'll see that there's a lot of operations um, for lists to uh, work with right so for instance there's one that it's called sort list this one will organize the list um, in a specific way you can see A to Z uh, and there's many other options like shifting list we'll see that one in the next tutorial and list item and so forth right mm, so let's bring in sort list to see and you see that we are kind of almost forgetting what is behind and we could just like connect this list now and we can make another version of this tab to just be constantly checking what are we getting so these distances is a list of distances now these distances are kind of organized from the smallest to the biggest one right um, and we're just manipulating the list the order of the list has switched we're not changing the position of the points only what is first in the list and what is second right so this is the kind of operations that you're dealing directly with the data and the organization of the data to achieve something as opposed to just really kind of any geometrical calculation here um, this sorting also gives us an option of like what is the optional list that you wanna synchronis synchronically um, let's say sort so let's say we're using the distances to also sort out something else in this case the list of points right I know that this might sound a little bit kind of difficult to understand but what we're doing is just using the distances to sort out also the points because what we want to do is connect only to the first point in the list right so I'm gonna just connect this point list in here that is not doing anything yet really it's just giving us the list of distances organized and the list of points organized let's check that again it's a really good practice to constantly be putting these tabs here so you can really see and understand what you're doing um, so these are reference points that's perfect so now we know that in this list of points the first point is the one that is closest right so how do we pick out of this list only one point right for that we have something called the list item so we can input the list this is the list and we can input the I meaning the index remember the index the index is which the which is the element that we want to graph the zero would be the first one one would be the second one and so forth right and by default is zero you can check that it says default zero but we could still 
specify that in a kind of very precise way by doing a slider, changing the slider type to integer, and leaving it in zero, right? So we're specifying graph the element zero, right? That means it's grabbing the first point in the list, right? And the first point in the list, because it's a sorted list, it's going to be the first point. So that's the way of really kind of, it's highlighting here already, this is the first, the closest point to this evaluation point. Let's do that line now again, between the first point and the evaluation point, which is really the point. So you'll see that we can actually move our point around and it's constantly evaluating which is the closest point out of all those points it's sorting the list out and it's figuring out which one is the closest and it's making a line only to the closest one so that's in this example you kind of start understanding a little bit what these lists are used for uh, we can sort them out and we can just pick one element from a list to do something like this um, and in this way we can just be very specific about the creation of some geometry based on this new information, right? So that's it for this one. And in the next one, we're going to see some more operations with lists. See you.